Welcome to satdecoded.com. Today's topic is word problem functions, which are pretty much basically what they sound like. They are word problems that involve functions. And I know it might look intimidating, there's a huge block of text here, but don't get scared. These are actually one of the most simple and straightforward function questions you'll probably run into. All we have to do is identify what the function is, you know, the, the master formula for the function, then identify what the variables are inside this, inside this uh, formula, and then replace those variables with the actual numbers that the question itself provides you. So it'll make more sense when we take a look at, at the example. So the question says, the total monthly telephone charge C in dollars of using X minutes in a month is given by the function C of X equals 0.21X plus K, where K is a constant. If 300 minutes are used this month and the monthly charge is $70, what is the value of K? And of course, these right here are potential K values. Okay, so the first step is to identify the function or the master formula. So I'm just going to rewrite it here for easier access. C of x equals 0.21x plus k, where k is a constant. All right, so the next step is to identify our variables. We have a c, we have an x, and we have a k. Of course, we have no idea what the k is right now, so I'm just going to write a question mark. If we already knew what the k was, then you know there's really no question here to be solved. But let's take a look at c and x and see if we can figure out what values those are. Okay. So the question says, if 300 minutes are used, 300 minutes, well, up here it says of using x minutes. So we know that x is being replaced by 300. So we can go ahead and write down x equals 300. What that means is wherever we see the x, right here and right here, we're going to replace it with 300. So now we have c of 300 equals 0 0.21 times 300 plus K. All right, now here's the next part. We have to figure out what C is. C is the total monthly telephone charge in dollars. And right here we have the monthly charge is $70. So therefore C is $70 or just 70, okay? A lot of people make, um, they fall into this one pitfall right here. They, they see a C right here and they write down 70 and then they write this 300 down here as well and then they think okay I gotta do 70 times 300 equals all of this right here that's actually incorrect in normal algebra C uh, in times uh, 300 because it looks like it's in parentheses um, that's normally what you do you just multiply it together but that's normal algebra for functions it's actually a little bit different so I'm gonna cross this off because this is actually incorrect what we should realize is that C is actually the same thing as c of x for the purposes of this question. How is that possible, right? If c were the same thing as c of x, then what's the point of writing this x at all? If they're the same thing, just how can they be the same thing, right? Well, we can think of c right here as the function in its entirety. Okay, it's the entire function, everything that this function can be. Whereas c of x right here, the whole thing, is the function of c evaluated at a specific point, and that point is the x. The function evaluated at the point x. Okay, so c right here as a function in it, in its entirety encapsulates every single possible evaluation for every single point. It doesn't matter what x is. x could be 0, it could be 10, it could be 30, 40, 50, it really doesn't matter. It's just a, a bigger umbrella category on the left-hand side. So when we have c of x, or in this case c of 300, that just means the value of the function c evaluated when x equals 300. So don't multiply together, okay? c at 300 is equal to 70. All right, so this whole thing, c of 300, is actually just equal to 70 itself. So 70 equals all of this. 70 equals 0 0.21 times 300 plus k. And that's really the only pitfall of this question. If you can get past that, then you're golden. 
So let's go ahead and solve this. If we whip out our calculator, 0 0.21 times 300 is 63. And then let's bring down the K. So 60, 63 plus K is 70. So what does K have to be? Well, it has to be 7 because 63 plus 7 is equal to 70. All right. So as long as you don't fall for that one pitfall, if you, as long as you recognize that C really is the same thing as C of X, then you'll be good. Okay. All right, let's try one more example. Um, this one's a little bit harder, but not too bad either. The question says, a factory's output of cars produced each month is a function of the number of workers and machines combined. If X represents the total number of workers and machines combined, and P of X represents the factory's output of cars this month, then P of X equals one third times the quantity X squared plus six X plus nine. What is the output of cars of a factory with 200 workers and 100 machines? So again, we want to identify what our, um, what our function is. So I'm just going to rewrite it again. One third times the quantity x squared plus 6x plus 9. Then we want to identify our variables. This time we only have two variables. We have a p and we have an x. But remember, p is the same thing as p of x. It just means the value of the function p when evaluated at whatever x happens to be. So let's figure out what x actually is. It says x represents the total number of workers and machines combined. So how many workers and machines combined do we have? Well, we have 200 workers and 100 machines. So if we combine them, that means add them, 200 plus 100, that means x is 300. Okay, so in this case, P is actually equal to P of 300 because I'm just replacing this X with 300. All right, so P of 300 is equal to one third X squared. So now I'm going to replace the X with the 300. So it becomes 300 squared plus six times 300. Again, just replacing the X right here with the 300 plus nine. So if we whip out our calculator and we calculate this whole thing, that's going to, well, I'll just do this by hand. 90,000 plus 1800 plus 9. Now I'll take out my calculator. So if we evaluate this whole thing, one third times this whole quantity, we get 30,603. Let me write this zero a little better. So P of 300 is equal to 30,603. I remember. That's really the same thing as P, and, and P of X, or just P, represents the factory's output of cars this month. And the question is asking, what is the output of cars? So the output of cars this month is 30,603. That's our final answer. Just don't get uh, P of X and P confused. P itself is not really a variable. It's more of a, it's, it's the entire function. All right, let's try one more question. And this next question is probably the hardest of the bunch, but it's not too bad either. So let's take a look. A certain analyst modeled the stock price of a certain company over the past 100 day period with the function S given here. It says S of T equals T squared over two minus 40 T plus M, where M is a constant and S of T represents the stock price on day number T for zero is less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to 99. On what day was the stock price the same as it was on day 20? And here are our possible choices, 10, 30, 40, 50, and 60. This question is actually a two-step question because it's asking us on what day, so on what other day, was the stock price the same as it was on day 20? So we need to first know what the stock price was on day 20 before we can figure out anything else. So day 20, well, right here it says day number T. So we know 20 in this case is our T. So let's go ahead and write that down, T equals 20. And this whole formula right here, I'm not gonna rewrite it this time, that's our function. We're looking for S of 20 right now. Remember, that does not mean S times 20, that just means the function of s evaluated at 20, evaluated at, on day number 20. Okay, so 
wherever we see t, we're going to replace it with 20 right now. So we have t squared, so that becomes 20 squared divided by 2 minus 40 times t, which means 40 times 20 plus m. So right now I have no idea what m is. In fact, we will probably never know what m is because it's just some constant. There's no other information in this question that would help us solve m, so we're going to leave it alone. So let's just keep evaluating what we can and simplify what we got. 400 divided by 2 minus uh, 800 plus m. So that means 200 minus 800 plus m, which ultimately becomes negative 600 plus m. So that's our answer to the stock price on day 20. We don't have an actual full number because we don't know what m is, but we do have this expression, which is as simple as we're able to get it with the information they provide us. So what we need to do now is find out what other day happened to have this same stock price of negative 600 plus m. Okay, And these choices right here are the other possible days. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick one and see which one works. Uh, remember, these are day numbers, so they represent t's. Okay, So just choose one, plug it into this whole formula right here, evaluate it, simplify it, and see if it ends up with negative 600 plus m. I'm going to spare us the time, and I'm just going to jump straight to the answer. It's going to be 60. So I'll show you how that works. S of 60 equals 60 squared minus 2 minus 40 times 60 plus m. So this top part, 60 squared, becomes 3600 divided by 2 minus 40 times 60 is 2400 plus m. So that part right here becomes 1800 minus 2400 plus m. And if we calculate 1800 minus 2400, we get the negative 600. And of course, we have a plus m right here, so we still have the plus m right here. So on day 60, we have the same stock price as we did on day 20. So there's our answer. On what other day is it going to be the same stock price as it was on day 20? Day 60. Final answer. So good luck, guys. Hope that makes sense. Just remember, don't fall for that one pitfall. Don't take an S and multiply by the 60. Okay? It's just the function of S evaluated on day 60 or the function of S evaluated on day 20 or whatever other day you want to try out for these answer choices. All right, guys. Good luck. I'll see you in the next, in the next video.